everybody. This is a Lamley preview. Two Matchbox 5 packs for you today. Chock full of good stuff, to be sure. We're going to look at these models, but it's going to be kind of fun because we're just going to isolate the models and look at them because both of these five packs are from Top Gun Maverick. Yes, that's the sequel to Top Gun. Yes, it was supposed to be coming out this year. I guess it still might, but I think it was scheduled for a May release, if I remember correctly, sometime this summer as the blockbuster season was set to get underway, spring into summer. But obviously, with COVID-19, all the movies have been delayed. That includes Top Gun, Wonder Woman, Fast and Furious. All those big blockbuster uh, movies have been delayed. Some of them for a whole year, like Fast and Furious. Others like this one, and I think it's been rescheduled for December, provided um, there's some semblance of normalcy at that time. Nonetheless, you can imagine Mattel has been working with all kinds of movie studios, Fast and Furious being one with Hot Wheels, um, Obviously, Matchbox and Top Gun. And I would imagine if they could, they would delay all the products. But sometimes these things roll out and they were already on their way when you're working years and months in advance to get these rolled out. Obviously, sometimes things might have already been on the docket. Now, the, I got these from Village Diecast on eBay and they were able to order these from Mattel. I think they're still available if I remember. So... They obviously made it through and, you know, maybe there's been other products that are being delayed for the release of the movie, but these made it through. So we're going to open up these models. We're going to get to it. Um, I'm going to go with this one first and we'll make sense of the of the castings and models themselves. But ultimately, um, we know nothing about uh, the context of these models in the movie. We obviously know airplanes. It's Top Gun. But um, who drives what and which one and where and what these what role these cars play? In, uh, in the movie, we won't know until it's released come December. So let's just get right to it. Top Gun Maverick, that's the theme. There's not much in terms of art here. Just an airplane flying through a sunrise or sunset. There's the models for this pack. Uh, the mumbo jumbo, as I like to say. This is with uh, Paramount, right? This was a Paramount vehicle. Um, and then we've got uh, five castings. So let's just get right to it. Let's see how well I do at opening these up. Sometimes I, eh, pretty good. Decent. So now I don't know. Now obviously this hobby dealer was able to order them, Village Diecast. I don't know if we're going to see these in stores. They might have been able to at least um, get them uh, postponed in stores. You can imagine what this has done for companies like Mattel. Um, trying to get this scheduling. I mean, Fast and Furious, you can imagine all the stuff that they've planned for that. And that's been delayed a year. And they they usually plan all of these well in advance. Um, and so there's probably been a lot of scrambling. I don't know for sure. But all right, let's just get to it. Top Gun is the theme. This is the, uh, I'm going to use this as a reference. I'm assuming that's the swing wing. I don't know if they've done airplanes in... Um, in five packs before, but let's just get right to it. I, I'm, yep, the wings do open. So I don't know if this is a um, Skybusters model that's already been out in the past. It's pretty simple. It's got plastic wings um, that obviously you can pull out and rotate and turns into a jet fighter. These wheels don't roll. <laughs> obviously, I don't know why I'm trying to make them roll. Um, nothing else moves except for the wings. It's a pretty simple casting. And I think for a five pack for the top, for the Top Gun fans, you might have some more detailed planes, obviously in other toy lines and other Mattel lines affiliated with top, with Top Gun. But, um, this is just a simple plane. That's, uh, essentially as big, um, as the vehicles themselves. I'm going backwards because I think the models at the top are the more interesting ones. Next one is the, uh, Jeep four by four older casting. Again, we can just look at the cast and we have no idea if there's any context here. This one's supposed to look a little bit uh, scratched up, beat up, maybe a slightly slight patina look to it. Um, this casting, I think, if it were redone, and I think it actually was updated, but it's just big and kind of clunky. Um, there's a lot of other better castings out there, at least in my opinion. Next up is the Ford Bronco. This is the 1972 Ford Bronco casting. It's been around a while. This one... I think will be well liked by collectors because it's just plain and it's a really nice color. Something says that this might be Maverick who drives this, but I'm just guessing because it just seems like his kind of vehicle, right? Maverick being 
Tom Cruise character. I still have such, ugh, this toe hook was such a bad decision. <laughs> Everything else is great about this casting, but that toe hook is just still so awkward. We call it the tail. Um, I just wish one day it would get modified and just eliminated. It. It's just terrible, right? Terrible. I don't usually go off that strong, but uh, I have had, uh, I have had, uh, I've gone after that tail a lot of times. All right, the final two. This is cool. Uh, these are the two that I think are the best of this cat of this uh, set. This is the uh, 2019 Ford Mustang. We have actually, this is the third version of this brand new casting in, two, in 2020. Uh, technically, officially the second, right? Because I've, I've previewed the third. Uh, this has been in that special Mustang set. So it started green and then we've seen it um, recolored orange in the recolor of the Mustang set, which isn't out yet, but I've previewed it. And then we have this color in kind of a, I don't know what you'd call it, a gunmetal brown almost. I don't know if that's a real color. But it's a really nice casting. This is a really nice version of the casting. I like the black rims on it. Um, really, really cool to see uh, to see that one released again. And then finally, another new casting for 2020. I think it was for 2020, right? Or maybe 2019. It's the Mini Countryman. And I think this one actually was released in green as well. But this one obviously is a replica of a car driven by a character in Top Gun Maverick. This one has black rims. Um, I don't know what else to compare them to. I don't know if I have the Mini Countryman. It's not a casting I'm particularly fond of, um, but this is a nice version of that casting. Nice and realistic. So, you know, typically you know, we do Fast and Furious uh, sets and things like that, and I always, always say, like, I'm more into the cars themselves as opposed to whatever role they play in the movie. Now it's really that because I have no idea... Um, what role they play. All right, this is the other pack. I don't have any names other than, you know, just Top Gun Maverick. So this could be pack one or two. I don't really know. Um, all the same, we have a new casting in this one, which I am really excited about, the 1956 Aston Martin DBR1. It's at the top. We'll make it the last model we look at, but we're going to go through some really cool stuff to get there. So let's open that up. fun to guess but I don't you know I I don't think you know like I think about the original Top Gun Kelly McGillis was the love interest right and then um was Robert Duvall in it or am I mixing that up with like Apocalypse Now um and then uh we had uh Anthony what was his name the guy was an ER he died in that movie Meg Ryan was his wife and then um Val Kilmer was in it right and I don't think, I don't know if he's in this one. All right, so same plane casting, a little bit different. Don't know if this is a good guy or a bad guy, or doesn't matter. Um, so this is exactly the same casting, right? I think it is. Yeah, it is. Um, so we've looked at that one. It has some, some detailing on the wing that I don't see on the other ones. So yay for that. Next up is the... Uh, I gotta, what is this one called? It's the Petrol Pumper. Um, kind of nice, realistic casting. Jet fuel obviously makes sense to have this one in here. This casting's been around for a long time. It's pretty standard, very Matchbox-ish. Just nice, realistic utility vehicle. That's one of the things I really like about Matchbox is they don't uh, they don't they don't have to make it goofy looking. They used to, um, but they don't anymore. That's a nice, realistic uh, jet fuel tanker, which makes a ton of sense. I doubt that plays a prominent role in the movie. Okay, this I'm really excited about. This is the 2010 Ford Raptor. And when you think about it, again, what role it plays in the movie, I have no idea. But when you look at it, this is the first time the Matchbox Ford Raptor is going with just one color with front detailing and rear detailing. The first release had some stock look to it. It was like the... There was like that pattern on the back, but nothing like this. And all of them have had side patterns, including the Lamley Leaks, which I'm very fond of, obviously. But this is, this might be the best version of the Raptor release so far. Jet black. It's got, like I said, the headlights and the taillights. And how nice looking is that one? It's obviously the first generation Raptor. Um, Hot Wheels has done the second generation. 
but uh, putting this one together with the other Raptors is fantastic. Um, between both brands, Hot Wheels and Matchbox, I am a big fan of that one, and I think that's going to be a popular release among collectors. Same thing with the next one. This is the 2008, right? Dodge Challenger SRT8, I believe. I don't know what the base says it. Just says Dodge Challenger, right? This is a casting that um, I really liked when they first did it. It's the first generation, well, you know, of the of the recent iteration of the Dodge Challenger. Hot Wheels was doing them, but they were doing them with those big wheels in the back, and it just didn't look right for to me. And then Matchbox finally did one, and they did it right. And you can see this one, not only headlights in the front. But it's got that uh, sports stripe center on the on the hood, and then detailing on the back. So it's uh, you know the first version of that Dodge Challenger in this not matte gray, but kind of a dull gray with the black detailing. I love it with the uh, black five spoke rims on it. It's just a really it's a really great casting, and this one just it just it's just a perfect replica. All right, and here is the one new model out of this set. If you don't count the Mustang, but this one is the first time it's being seen. 1956 Aston Martin DBR1. Maybe this is what Maverick drives. Pretty well-paid uh, pilot, if that's the case. Um, but this is awesome. And obviously, this is, what, this is one thing I like about these movie licenses. Even if I don't care about the movie, what's cool about this is that, um, that it's in the movie and the SKU, the SKU... Um, allows for Matchbox or Hot Wheels in the case of Fast and Furious to say, let's make the car. So obviously they do it for the movie, and now we're going to see this car show up in the basic range and everything else in the future, right? So we'll see all kinds of cool versions of this one. And this one starts perfect. Simple Racing Deco and British Racing Green. You've got that um, license, which I think is very British to have those numbers painted on the front of the car. And it doesn't have any detailing in the back, doesn't necessarily, I mean, it would be great to have it, but considering all the other detailing on this one, and uh, you can see it even has the harnesses detailed into the seats. This is a really cool, cool casting, really beautifully done by Matchbox. And between that and the um, the Austin Healey, I think, and the uh, or the whatever, and then the Jag Roadster that they've done, uh, this is a nice addition to that to little arsenal of British cars that they are putting together. And obviously works well with the uh, British Racing Green Mini Countryman as well, right? So there you go. I think both of these five packs, I think the one with the Challenger, Raptor, and Aston Martin might be your, your real go-to. But considering the Mustang's pretty cool, the Bronco's pretty cool, and the Mini Countryman, I think we're good. As far as those airplanes go, um, give them to someone else, right? I don't know. That's my opinion. But uh, I like it really really cool pack you guys tell me what you think thanks to village diecast for uh well i just bought him off him on ebay when i saw him but uh, it's cool that he was able to get them and we'll see where these fit in the movie you guys tell me what you think bye